Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much to everybody who left a comment in last week's video about enjoying the more vloggy style of videos. It is kind of what I used to do, um, and I moved away from it thinking people were maybe a little bit bored of that. Um, but I'll head back that way, especially it mean, if it means that there's something for you guys to watch, because I'm not doing much racing at the moment. So I'll kind of try and do that. I can't promise they're gonna be every week, but I'll do them as and when I can. Today is Tuesday. It is ride day. I can't say I'm jumping up and down with excitement about getting on the bike tonight. Kind of not feeling it, but I'm going to make myself do it. I'm going to get on, tick off stage three of the Tour of Watopia. Going to do the shorter route, the volcano climb, which in itself will take me a little while to do. And I'm hoping I feel as strong as I did last Tuesday. And I can put out a bit of power, a nice steady power graph, because any of you guys that have watched my videos for a little while will know that's that never happens with me. I never get a steady power graph. I'm hoping I can do the same so that I get up the volcano with a relatively good time. Um, I don't want to end up dropping back, stop, start, stop, start, and just taking hours to get up there. So anyway, I'm gonna go get changed, jump on and get stage three ticked off, hopefully feeling good. Quite a few people in this ride. 767 people on the start line and as per usual i'm slowly making my way backwards through the pack uh what am i now 627. i have stuck with a group for a little while although it was more people sort of passing around me there was a big string of people on the road i was kind of looking for that pack that i sat with last tuesday when i did the uh tour of Watopia stage two and i stayed in that group for a long part of that ride this one will be different uh, just simply because it's got hills in it and I struggled to stay with the, the groups. Uh, last week's ride was very, very flat, but it never felt like a group really came together that I could stick with. You can see here, I'm not really in a group. A lot There is a bit of a group a little bit further up the road that I was in with in the underwater tunnel, but does anyone else find that these gravelly bits, people just seem to disappear past me. I don't know whether I'm just not putting out enough power or what, but I, I don't think it's a bike choice. Um, I worked, it took me a long, long time, many years to get the uh, the Tron bike, so I'm not going to easily give it up. Um, but whilst it would have been nice to find a group to stay in, I think the important thing for me is, is just keeping that consistency again. You can see already that power graph at the bottom is pretty flat. There is that little jump up that was that climb out of the underwater tunnel, tunnel. But I'm really happy managing to keep this just a consistent power output. And I'm just thinking, okay, well, we're only seven minutes in. Can I keep this one going like I did last week? It is a little bit more difficult to put out consistent watts on a route that isn't flat. You kind of, it kind of ebbs and flows as the road goes up and down a little bit. You put out, put out a little bit more power as you go up the hills and, and then you know, backing off a little bit as you go down. It's just obviously natural and everybody, everyone does that. I do have my trainer difficulty turned down relatively low though. Uh, it's not exactly zero, but it's, it's I can't remember. It must be about 20%, I guess, just so that I can have a little bit more consistency in those power outputs uh, and and just use it as that time to keep my legs going and, and keep the consistency without feeling the hills too much. Uh, as you can see, I've backed off right into the <laughs> into the grey zone there, and then as it as it levels off, just put the power down again. Coming up to the main point in the ride, the volcano climb. I'm going to mention it again. I've managed to keep that power graph pretty flat. I'm feeling pretty strong. And I know I said that I don't have the training difficulty turned up very high. And I'm going to start to feel the climb, but what I also want to do is find a gear that makes it feel like I'm climbing as well. Something that I can settle into and feel I can get to the top. Um, there's some flat bits in this as well, and actually there's a couple of downhill bits. I think we're just about to go over the sort of the brow of this hill and it goes down for a little bit. But I want to find something that's just going to feel comfortable, something that I can push myself, make it feel like I'm climbing, uh, and get to the top in a reasonable time. And look at this. I know that we're still early in this climb. But I've managed a consistent green zone effort. I know there's a couple of blue bits in there. I'm just about to back off slightly, I think, as we're going downhill here. But feeling really, really good. And I'm nearly at the top here. You can see a lot of it has been green. I did sort of drop back into the blue at certain bits uh, as I was just getting a bit tired coming towards the top. 
Uh, and then I did get to the top here and I thought, okay, just give out a bit of a blast. I could see that finish line. Uh, <laughs> and that was just, I need to get there now. Uh, what are we, it's taken 42 minutes to get to this point in the ride. A little bit of orange and red zone here just to get over the brow of the hill. But again, I'm really, really pleased that I've managed to just keep consistency. And I know I keep banging on about it. I'm probably boring you all to death. But for someone who consistently rides <laughs> with very jaggedy power graphs, to be able to, to, cons to do this in a couple of rides, I'm just chuffed with. I'm <laughs> over the moon. Uh, but I went around the top here, back down to the start line, and I did that in 17 minutes 45. So uh, quite happy with that. Really positive. Uh, yeah, I went back down to the bottom, finished off the route, uh, and finished stage three. Hoodie weather has definitely arrived. Had a sudden change from quite a warm week to uh, now quite a cold week, but uh, I'm all for it, sticking the hoodie on and getting into the winter months. Um, that ride on Tuesday, really enjoyed it. Felt really strong again and not really had any issues with the knee since. So fingers crossed that's getting a bit better, but also I'm feeling really strong on the bike, which is good. That said, I haven't done any races. Um, so I don't know how they will go and I've definitely got up that volcano quicker it, Even if you take out all of the banded rides we've done up there um, I think I've done it about five five minutes quicker than that That took me I think it was 17 minutes. So But that wasn't that wasn't the aim of it. Uh, I wasn't trying to get up there as quickly as I could but Yeah, another enjoyable ride done. It's Thursday. I've come out between rain showers It was tipping it down a few seconds ago before I came out just to uh, take a walk to the shop get some lunch although it's starting to spit again so I think I'm gonna get wet what am I gonna do tonight um, the thought has crossed my mind about doing the race but I don't know whether to give my knee another week or not and do something else I don't really know um, I guess I'll think about it this afternoon and make a decision a bit later um, so yeah I'll see you then when I know what I'm gonna do so I've decided I'm not going to race tonight. I'm going to give my knee a little bit more time to recover. It's feeling okay. I just think maybe it needs a little bit longer before giving it an all-out, full-on race effort. Which is a shame because tonight's route is the Neokio crit circuit and I quite enjoy that one. Um, I'm still pondering it now as I speak, but I think I'm going to have to be sensible and not race. So I'm going to jump on and do a ride with the Pacer Bots Robo Partners. I I, whatever they're called now I can't remember um, and I know I think you can now move up and down between the between the different bots um, as you ride so I might do that and sort of step it up do a little bit more difficult riding then back off but it's going to be probably a lower effort than what Tuesday was uh, and just keep it sort of zone two and there or thereabouts just to get another hour in on the bike I don't know whether you can hear it but it is properly raining out there now uh, it's banging on the windows um, I got a little bit wet on my walk back from the shop. The weather's definitely changed. I looked at the weather forecast. I think the only day it's not raining in the next two weeks is Sunday. So, yeah, the weather's definitely changed. Um, so, <laughs> the hoodies are out. I quite like that, though. I'm weird. When it comes to the end of a season, I'm looking forward to the next one. So, the end of the summer, I quite look forward to you know the darker nights and putting a hoodie on. And then, at the end of the winter, I'm looking forward to the lighter nights and putting the shorts back on. So, um yeah, we're definitely heading in towards the winter months, but uh, I'm going to go get changed and jump on the bike. I thought I'd join Bernie. I think he's 1.4, 1.5 watts per kilo uh, riding around Watopia, and it's dropped me in at the worst possible point on a climb, and it's only 3%, but I just I didn't have any speed built up, and I didn't have any watts being put out, really, uh, despite what I could build up in the pedal assist time, and I just watched them sort of disappear off uh, up the road so I joined and had to put out a big burst of power well I'm up at nearly 400 watts there 394 404 to just try and catch onto the back of the group um, before they disappear off up the road and I don't know what it is I, I actually where it doesn't matter where I get dropped in with these pace partner bots I f find it a little takes me a little bit of a while to get into the flow of riding with them 
because you have to know when to back off on certain points on the hill and when to put the power down or you can just get left behind or leave them a long way behind as well I, I don't know whether the draft feels different when you ride with them or what but even if we've got to the top here I've backed off again thinking okay I can sit in with a group and you can see they're pulling away again so it took me a little while to get the hang of what I needed to do to stay in with that group you can see here where I've had to put out a little bit of extra power just to make sure I stick with these guys and there's a point a little while ago where I had to stop pedaling completely because we're going downhill that's where I struggle on a downhill because of the added weight I've got I'm trying not to to zoom off the front of the group and lose the pace bot uh, which resets the the counter the multiplier back down to zero so it's a bit of a challenge um, but I did settle in quite well uh, it's a big group riding with D Bernie here as well, which was, I, I don't know whether that makes it easier or harder because you've got groups pulling the draft off the front and stuff, but I'm doing all right. It's, it's still consistent, which is what is important. I stuck with Bernie for 35 minutes and thought, okay, I'm going to test this jumping around feature. I actually did it on my phone on the companion app rather than on the screen. So you don't, can't see what I chose, uh, but I decided I was going to, jump over to the slightly easier ride it does pop up on here onto the 1.1 watts per kilo now i was up at the two and a half multiplier it dropped me in at this ride that's pretty instant which i think is a brilliant considering how long it can sometimes take to load some of the worlds when you're just dropping into a ride to to move instantly between pace bots is really good but i do think it's a shame you don't take your multiplier with you i got up to the 2.5 and i've just jumped across over here to ride with this bot and uh yeah it's, it's moved back to one and i have just leveled up to level 42 which is quite nice as well um but yeah i carried on the ride up for an hour with this really slow pace this this i found it even more difficult to stick with at the 1.1 watts because i had to back right off in certain points because the bot just isn't going fast enough um but i carried on around for the hour tested out that jump feature between the two which is quite quite handy i think actually if you want to kind of move around a little bit and and up the pace and then lower it down uh but another hour under my belt relatively consistent power output until this kind of point here really but uh still enjoyable it's saturday morning time for the weekly banded ride and you know what this is one of my favorite rides because i pay no attention whatsoever to my power output i just get on and cycle enjoy a bit of a chat with the guys if there's a, a few people around uh, and just take it really easy without too much thought so um yeah I, this is probably the ride that gets me on the bike easiest throughout the week because <laughs> i know i could just take it easy and not really think about it so uh I, yeah i like banded rides like that i'm gonna get changed jump on and do that and then we'll uh, we'll wrap the week up afterwards really enjoyed the ride this morning Great fun to jump on and have a good chat with some of the guys. I had a good laugh. Uh, we did Country to Coastal and Mercury Islands. Uh, I've done that route before, but we set it up to do the, the full route rather than the usual 60 minutes on a Saturday morning. Uh, and it took us about an hour and 20 minutes. But yeah, great fun. Really, really enjoyed it. And that, again, is my third ride this week. I've managed for two weeks in a row to get on on my three designated riding days uh, and get some riding done. So I'm really, really pleased with that and the consistency that I've had with it as well, managed to keep things steady. And I know I keep banging on about it. I'm really, really sorry, but to see the flat power graphs for me is brilliant. So I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. Something that I've, that seems to have popped up on my YouTube feed a lot recently is um, about this new Zwift hub, Zwift hub one. And I, I've had a little bit of a look at it actually, and I'd like to gauge some feedback on what you guys kind of think. Um, I thought if we just head over to the Zwift website, we can have a look at what it is. So the Zwift Hub One is four, uh, 549 pounds. I think it's $599 uh, in the States. Um, but for that, you also get a one year membership to Zwift included, which is worth what 150 odd pounds as it is, which is awesome. Um, but what I really like is, okay, you get the Zwift Hub, the Zwift Click, and a year of uh, year of Zwift. Um, I like the idea of the virtual gears because if you buy the Zwift Hub One, uh, let's scroll down a bit. This tells you all about the membership. It comes with this new thing called the Zwift Cog, 
And I know some of the more expensive smart trainers that you get, the bikes have the virtual shifting and, and not needing a cassette and stuff. But I think this is brilliant. You can fit it to any, uh, fit it to the Zwift hub and then use any bike to sit on it. And it is essentially just a cassette that sits on the back that you don't, it just stays in that one gear for the whole ride. And then it uses the virtual shifting to shift the gears for you. You can either use this Wift Click, um, which is on, uh, which comes in the packet with it. So you can shift the gears up or down. I think you get 24 gears or um, you can use the new Zwift paddle things. The Zwift play is that are they called? as well to shift the gears. I really like that. I think it's a great idea. Um, and for the price point of £549, seems incredible. I don't know whether a trainer, oh, it says it's whisper, whisper quiet there. I don't know whether a trainer of this amount could be whispered quiet. Now my, my trainer I bought in 2017, October 2017, so it's quite old. And I was comparing the trainer specs between the two and the only real difference, well, there isn't much of a difference. So the power accuracy is plus or minus 2.5%. That's the same as my Elite Diretto. I always, not quite sure what to call it. Diretto, Diretto, not quite sure. And I think my flywheel weight is about 4.2 kilograms. This is 4.7. The other thing that I like about this trainer is that it has a 10 hertz pole rate. A pole rate, is that the right term? I don't know but it communicates with your device a lot more often. So for things like in a race, if you suddenly put down power, you'll, you'll see it quicker. I've had a lot of comments in my YouTube videos about sticky watts that I get with my trainer. And it does frustrate me. Um, it would frustrate me more if I was hanging with a group and <laughs> racing for a win, um, where essentially it takes longer for my power output to drop after I stop pedaling. But that seems to, this this sort of trainer would make a huge difference. I just wonder what everyone else thinks about this new Zwift cog thing to turn. It doesn't matter what your bike is. It'll make it easier to switch bikes on or off. So if you've got multiple bikes in the family, wife, children, um, husband, whatever it is, can just take the bike off and put their own bike on without having to mess around with different gearings. You might have a 11 speed or a 12 speed bikes. They all just fit on there. Uh, and then shift virtually, which I think is is brilliant. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to know what you guys think of it because I think it's, I'm surprised it's taken quite this long to get to that point. I hope Zwift will allow other trainer providers to kind of use that as well within their trainers. Uh, so it's not, not necessarily locking people into Zwift trainers and Zwift devices, uh, but I guess we shall see. Um, I don't need a new trainer at the moment. I'm sure there's going to be a point after it's six years of use that it is going to give up the ghost at some point. Um, but I'd definitely be thinking about that one. I, you know, I can't, <laughs> I can't afford a new trainer at the moment and I'm over the weight limit on it. Um, so it's definitely an option, not an option for me now, but I think it's brilliant and something possibly if this one ever goes kaput, um, that I could think about, but, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop babbling on about that. Again, really positive week. Um, moving into next week, hopefully the same three race, uh, rides, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and maybe Tuesday, uh, Thursday will be race day if my knee holds up. It's it's doing okay at the moment. It still twinges every now and again, but it's definitely feeling better. But uh, yeah, as usual, thank you to all of the channel members coming up the screen right now. Your support is amazing. Um, yeah, we move on to next week. But if you have enjoyed this video, do hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.